Howdy. So today is Tuesday, May 11th. Uh, it's been a few months since the last video. I think it was Super Bowl Sunday in February. Um, we've had a lot going on at the farm and at the market. So the market was, uh, it was in that winter market for those however many months over the winter. And in early April, it started the, uh, the main season market down at the commuter parking lot where it has been most of the time. Um, and of course, a lot more vendors when that happened and, and customers have been just increasing as, as the temperatures warm and that kind of thing. Uh, but so to get ready for that, we've uh, been doing a lot more around the farm. So we started doing this cover crop uh, idea and uh, you know how, how our garden sort of divided into two sections. We have an upper half and a lower half. In the lower half we've got doing our salad mix right now. Upper half has just been kind of idle. And so we kind of cleaned it out and then planted peas in all the beds. Uh, and in theory, the peas will restore nitrogen back in the soil. And then we could use those beds maybe for like winter planting for this next winter season, something like that. So we're experimenting with cover crops. Um, we've still got, you know, we're trying to do this herb line. So basil and uh, cilantro and dill and parsley and thyme. We're trying to add add herbs as as time goes on we're trying to be consistent with it but not go too crazy you know just a, a controlled growth herbs and we're doing garden starter like transplant you know kind of nursery style plants um see how that goes and then you know microgreens we're increasing just as as people buy them and and eggs just you know we we we're selling out every week so um you know, it's, we do, we do bring some to the market, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that do these pre-orders, but we are able most of the time to bring um, two, three dozen eggs to the market and just have them out on the table and, but they do, they do sell. So, uh, but, uh, oh, and so, so one other thing, so that the main purpose of today's video is to document this uh, hoop house we've been building. So that was, this has been three months in the works. I think back in late February, we started getting the materials for this. And so it's a kind of like a greenhouse, but it's unheated and the ends are open and we want to put summer crops in there. So uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, and eggplant is the plan. But so we had, you know, back in February, so we had a couple of months to work with before we really needed to get crops in the ground. So it's been sort of a mad scramble recently to get this hoop house finished and so we tried to document what we could with a uh, time-lapse video so uh enjoy enjoy watching this and uh, we hope to see you at the market soon thanks a lot okay so february 27th um so what i just laid down there is one of our uh bird bath pool tippers see so it's got the Two by fours that you can use to pick up at the end and then the platform that you put the baby pool on and so i'm using that as like a base uh for this jig that i'm about to set up and the idea is i'm using just scrap pieces of like two by fours that were laying around and i'm screwing them into this pool tipper at, at a six foot radius so i measured i had a little stake in the ground to the right there with a string on it I measure six feet out and then a radius out from that stake so you see they're kind of curved in an arc um, and what I, we eventually discovered on February 27th is that the radius is too big uh, I need to end up needing to tighten it and so in a, in coming up here in a little bit we're gonna tighten the radius but so this is sort of a first trial so you see the metal pole there that's a 10 foot piece of chain link fence top rail so back in February I bought three of those pieces just to try things out I just wanted to gain a little confidence that this whole jig idea would even work like you know are the two by fours the way I've laid them out are they tall enough so that I can bend the thing without it like flopping over the top of the, the jig or, you know would that concept work so anyway so you saw car loaded with more of those so you know like I said we gained confidence in the jig back then even though it was a wider radius than we wanted at least 
gained confidence that the concept would work. So I went ahead and bought the rest of the uh, poles to make the hoop house. Um, so now I'm tightening the radius on the thing. This is a little later in March. Um, I want to see if, you know, if we can actually try to stand up, stand up some hoops. So it's a little bit tighter and then so each hoop is basically three of these chain link top rails and so two of them are curved and one I actually cut so the, of the 10 foot section I cut off two four foot sections and then there's a two foot section that's just kind of scrap so it's it's basically four feet from either end and so one of those ends has that swage on it so the way we do it is the swage end is going to be sticking up out of the ground and then the other end is both ends are non-swage so so non-swage on the other side so so we see we slam it in the ground so it's a four foot section so there's two feet in the ground and two feet above ground and I get it that's a t-post driver there that ended up being the solution so one of those two ground posts is going to have the swage sticking up and so then you see the, the two curved sections. Now I'm measuring diagonals to the other uh, to the other end of the hoop house, which we're not seeing right now. But uh, where to put the ground posts on the other side? And so then I'll stand up the hoop here in a second, right? So so that's three section three lengths of uh, chain link fence top rails. Now I'm bending the the curved pieces for the other other end of the hoop house that we're not seeing at the moment. Uh, so now you can see both of them there. So we got those stood up. So now I'm just tilling the ground. That The dark area on the left was an old, old compost pile that we just sort of destroyed and spread out a bunch. It had weeds in it and stuff. So just raking it out, trying to smooth it out. Ultimately, our plan is, which we've already done, but later in this video you'll see, we uh, ended up laying out cardboard and putting compost on top of that. So the tilling we're doing, tilling and prepping here is more just leveling and just, we don't want a whole lot of crazy growth underneath, you know, making things unlevel and puffy and stuff. So. So yeah, so the next thing is driving in, you know, cutting and driving in all the remaining ground posts. So it's a, it's roughly a 50 foot hoop house. Um, and I had five foot spacing between the hoops. So that means 11 total hoops. So I cut 11 of these chain link fence sections. Um, and so now sort of going fast forward here. So slamming in all those sections, the ground posts on the one side, and then we come back and do the other side here. And I'm kind of alternating the swage up versus not. And I don't know that you really need to alternate, but um, that's just what I did. So get that done. And then what you didn't see was installing, installing the hoops in there. This is a little short segment. So on this on this day, I want to go through and do self-tapping screws into that where all the connections are. Right. So there's three connections per hoop, and I just wanted a little more security that the thing would hold. Right. I didn't want a a, a one chain link fence piece to come out of the other one. So. Okay, so this is another day. So, so now we're bolting baseboards. So these are one by six. Um, I don't know that. I mean, that they're treated somehow. I don't know that it's full up pressure treating. I, when I read the thing, the little sticker at Lowe's, it said it was not intended for ground contact. Um, which you know you'd think with pressure treated it would be. And of course, there's 
if you get into farming philosophies and things, there's a lot of people, like, even like organic certification, USDA organic certification, I don't think you're supposed to use pure pressure treated wood uh, in contact with the ground. The thing is even, so on April 6th here, I was, I was installing it next to the ground, but we ended up coming back, unscrewing everything and putting on weed block fabric underneath because I wanted to have a little bit of barrier with weeds along the border. So in this one, April 18th, we've got weed blocker down underneath the baseboard. So here we're just measuring the poly. So the poly showed up in the mail after we had all this stuff set up. That's like, okay, is the poly going to actually reach? And in fact, it did not fit the full length of the hoop house. So the poly was basically exactly 50 feet. But because of the way we install the thing, we need a few extra inches at the ends to allow for flexibility. So I, I undid that end hoop there and moved it down maybe like six or seven inches. So um, from center of hoop to center of hoop, end to end, I think it's actually like 40, 49 feet, six inches or something instead of 50 feet exactly. Okay, so we measured the poly, we adjusted the hoop, and so now I'm going, um, getting channel lock and wiggle wire. So channel lock and wiggle wire is, is the means of securing the poly to the hoop house. And that, that thing that I'm messing with there is a garage in a box. You get that at like Tractor Supply or maybe Lowe's and Home Depot, I'm not sure. Um, and this is what we used last year for our quote unquote hoop house for tomatoes. And so I had channel lock still screwed onto that thing. So I'm going through and just pulling that stuff off because, um, you know, no need to, you know, we can actually make use of it up in this hoop house. So Alyssa's, Alyssa actually is using that garage in the box this year for some of her Roma tomatoes. But we're not, we don't have poly on top of it. She's, uh, she's cleaning up beds there. Uh, for some prepping for lettuce mix seeding uh, in a couple days. So this is installing channel lock along the baseboards. And you can kind of see there's a line. If you look at the baseboard nearest to us, you can see a little line going along through the middle of it. And that's, that's the channel lock. So, you know, 50 feet on either side. And then we do channel lock going over the actual hoop at each end of the hoop house. So, you know, two 10 foot sections plus two feet of riser on either side. So that's, what is that, 24 feet of channel lock per end hoop. So, you know, it's roughly 150 feet of channel lock. Yeah, so this is installing channel lock on the end hoop. And it's all just self tapping screws. The, uh, I believe I used a wood screw. I think I drilled the channel lock in the baseboard and then used a wood screw there. But for the attaching to the metal hoops, I used a self-tapping screw. And you see that there's a chain coming down kind of diagonal where I am right there. That That's uh, for wind bracing. So. It's attached to a um, something I pulled from the garage in a box. Uh, it's a um, kind of like a, I don't know how to describe it. It's sort of like a ground screw anchoring thing. It's a metal bar with like an eye hook at the top, but at the bottom of it, it these like screw things. <laughs> and so you can twist it and get it buried down to the ground. It's probably a foot and a half long. So it's, it's really secure down on the ground. Uh, and so I attach a chain from the top of the hoop house to that high hook thing. And that's sort of like my wind bracing scheme. In other hoop houses, you can have more like an internal wind bracing where <clears throat> I think that that's more the standard where you've got sort of a diagonal uh, chain link top rail coming up from maybe like the second hoop in or third hoop in coming up to meet the, the end hoop, you know, halfway up the thing. It's hard to describe but we, without a diagram, but 
if you look up hoop houses, wind bra hoop house wind bracing, that would be the sort of the standard thing. So I did this external just because we had those screw those screw things laying around. Okay, so now it's the big day, so we're putting the poly on. I'm using these one inch clamps um, just as sort of an extra set of hands effectively. Uh, we get it up part way and then I ended up just pulling it over. There's no graceful way to do this, it seems. So you just pull the thing over and fuss and fret with it until you get it over. And we wait. We waited until the, you know it wasn't super windy. Like we wanted to make sure that you know, we were looking at the weather forecast. And so this is for us. This would be early in the morning. This is eight between eight and nine a.m. on on one of these days, and wind wasn't too bad. Um, and so now we're using wiggle wire to sandwich the poly between wiggle wire and channel lock. And so we're going through that, going over that end hoop down there. Um, so secure the end hoop down there and then secure the end hoop nearest to us. Uh, get all that good. And then uh, we would do baseboard wiggle wire. Dogs are fantastic helpers. Schroeder likes to leave a ball near us, usually in our way, and, and so we can't avoid it, and so then we have to throw it for him, and he loves that, and we can't stand it. And that's the plan, so. So just making some tweaks. Um, you know, just make sure it's decently tight at either end. You know, it's not going to be perfect. That we could, we could undo and redo two or three more times to get it better. But it's like, you know, each each increment, uh, it's you're getting less and less payoff. So eventually, it's just like, well, it's good enough. So, so now this is the um, doing the wiggle wire along the baseboard, and Alyssa is going through on the on the other side, going down. Okay, so this is uh, a little while later. So we've got the plastic on, and then we, Alyssa laid down all this cardboard. And so, like I said, our, our plan is to cardboard and compost uh, as opposed to just tilling and planting directly into the ground. We, we were thinking that this would, you know, overall be overall less, uh, less of a burden in terms of workload because there's, you know, less weeds and things. So, yeah, we're doing weed blocker fabric, and we staple that into the cardboard, into the ground. I think the staples are like 8-inch long ground staples. Yes, <laughs> see Schroeder, le he leaves the ball at the end of the hoop, and he's like, hey, there you go. And so I just tossed it to... He's our farm hand. So yeah, this is the, that's the last piece. So we've got the whole floor of the hoop house covered with cardboard, compost, and weed blocker fabric. And now we're doing the burning the holes. So we're just doing a single row per bed, and it's 12 inch spacing, and we're using a three inch uh, hole. And so I got a three inch diameter uh, hole saw bit and drilled that into the wood and now we're doing um, you know it's like a blowtorch thing burning it's like a stencil so we're burning holes into this stencil into the weed blocker so one foot spacing and when you know that is sort of a best guess as to the proper spacing so we've heard uh, you know if you look up like Curtis Stone like I think he did like a 10 inch spacing with his tomatoes indeterminate cherry tomatoes in his hoop houses and that that's probably the densest I've heard and 
you know, last year I think we did, I think we had a combination of 14 inch and 16 inch spacing and we, we planted so much that 12 inch, you know, we could fill that out. We sewed, you know, in the trays enough to handle the 12 inch would be the number. So that we're trying that out and we'll see how it goes. This whole farming thing is just trial and error. You know, you, you take your best guess as to what, you know, the path forward with any given uh, decision that needs to be made. You just take your best guess and try it out. And if it didn't work out, and a lot of times it doesn't work out, <laughs> doesn't work out maybe quite as you planned well then you tweak it and next time you make it better and sometimes next time means next year with things like microgreens next time can mean like two weeks from now so that, and that's what's fantastic about microgreens is that your your iterations are on the order of a week or two whereas things like tomatoes it's it's an annual thing which is, so the learning process is that much slower so yeah, Alyssa's planting the seedlings and I'm doing my best to avoid planting. So I'm getting, um, we have a firewood pile, I'm getting blocks of wood. So we're gonna do a uh, row cover here momentarily. And all those logs are gonna hold down the row cover. So yeah, two rows of tomatoes. So one row, I think the middle row that she's doing now is cherry tomatoes, and the row on the left was the larger, like slicer type tomatoes. Um, the varieties we have, so cherries was uh, Super Sweet 100, Sun Gold, and Chocolate Cherry, and we, we end up doing a few yellow pear cherry sized tomatoes. And then on the left, the big ones, we had uh, Brandywine, New Girl, and Nepal. That's the row cover. So yeah, 